and welcome to our breakout session, Optimizing Your FBA Inventory for Success This Holiday Season. I'm Seamus Brown. And I'm Pawani Turaga. We are Principal Product Managers on the Fulfillment by Amazon team, working on inventory management products. In part one of today's presentation, we'll explain how FBA capacity limits work so you have the background you need to optimize your business working with inventory limits. And in part two, we'll show you how to find opportunities for inventory performance improvement in your business and provide strategies to take action. Finally, we'll end our presentation with Q&A so we can answer any remaining questions you have. You can submit questions directly to us through the event platform by typing them into the Q&A box. The most popular submissions will be answered live at the end of this session. Let's begin with fulfillment by Amazon capacity limits. In our opening session yesterday, you heard John Felton talk about the investments we are making to rapidly expand our capacity to improve the fulfillment experience so that, so that we can receive and store all of your products. Over the last 24 months, we have more than doubled the capacity of our US fulfillment network. We opened over 350 new fulfillment centers, sortation centers, regional air hubs, and delivery stations across the United States. Amazon hired more than 450,000 people, most of whom work in our fulfillment centers, picking, packing, and shipping your products to customers. Most recently, in September alone, over 100 new facilities were opened, and we continue these investments to provide more capacity for your products. With all these investments, you might be wondering, why do we still have capacity limits for FBA sellers? In yesterday's keynote, you heard how implementing restock limits on both our sellers and Amazon retail was an extremely tough decision we had to make during the pandemic. There are two key drivers behind these policies. First, as we had an unexpected surge in demand and the need for capacity, the volume of inventory coming into Amazon FCs is at record high levels. To manage the fulfillment network, we had to make tough decisions, including reducing buying from vendors and changing capacity management policies for FBA sellers. Second, we are still facing uncertainties from the pandemic and global supply chain disruptions, with material and labor shortages causing delays throughout the logistics industry. We understand that limits prevent some of you from sending the desired level of inventory to Amazon at your preferred time. And this can be especially challenging when you're also dealing with the pandemic and its impact on your business. Having said that, these limits are necessary to help us receive your products without delays so that all sellers can have a successful holiday season. With this context, let us take a closer look at FBA capacity limits. FBA has two types of limits which help us manage our fulfillment and logistic network efficiently. The first one is restock limits. These apply based on the capacity we have to receive your inventory, which includes capacity to store, check in, and transport your inventory to various FCs across the country using our transportation fleet and with the help of our fulfillment center associates. These limits determine the units you can ship to Amazon at a given point in time. With restock limits, we are managing the flow of inventory which comes to our fulfillment center. Second, we may apply storage volume limits to some sellers based on their inventory performance index, also known as IPI score. Storage volume limits help ensure we have sufficient space to store your products once the inventory reaches our fulfillment centers. Receiving your products in time and having sufficient storage capacity helps us run the network efficiently and get the products in the hands of our shared customers faster. Restock limits and storage volume limits are similar in some respects. For example, both apply to your account for the four different storage networks, with separate limits for standard size, oversize, footwear, and apparel. This gives you the flexibility to make decisions about how to use your limits across your portfolio of products. For example, if you have a limit of 1,000 units or 100 cubic feet in apparel, you can use all of that for one ASIN, or you may choose to spread that more evenly across your selection. 
But there are differences between restock and storage volume limits that are important to understand. Let us look at a few key differences. First, as you may have observed, restock limits applies to all sellers, whereas storage volume limits apply to sellers only with an IPI score below a certain threshold. This threshold is currently at 450 in US and at 500 in EU and UK. Second, restock limits are measured in units because it is based on the capacity to receive and process units coming into our network. Whereas storage volume are measured in cubic feet to manage storage space we have in our FCs. Another thing which differentiates the two is what counts against these limits. Restock limits count shipments which are on the way to Amazon and inventory already in Amazon. All these shipments, including those in working, receiving, and arriving status are included. This is because we have reserved capacity for your shipments to arrive in RFCs. On the other hand, usage for storage volume limits only counts inventory already stored at Amazon. You might have seen that these limits also updated in different cadence. Restock limits typically update weekly based on the capacity we have to receive your inventory in that week, which can change from week to week, whereas storage volume limits update quarterly. But there have been instances where we've kept restock limits stable for longer than a week, right, Pabani? That is right, Seamus. We regularly and continuously look for opportunities to increase limits or keep them stable as we add more capacity. For example, in the last six weeks, we have increased receipt capacity in the US so that sellers have more room to inbound ahead of the holiday season. You might be wondering what happens when you exceed your limit. If you exceed your restock limit, you will not be able to create new shipments till your utilization reduces. There are no fees charged for being in excess of your limit. If you exceed your storage limit, you will be charged an overage fees in addition to the pause on new shipment creation till your utilization reduces. It is important to remember that shipments which are on the way to Amazon will be received as usual, even if you exceed your limits. The last major difference is the factors which are considered in generating the limits. Both restock limits and storage limits consider historical and forecasted sales, including seasonality. They also consider the capacity available to receive and store inventory respectively. Restock limits considers the time it takes for your shipments to arrive at Amazon based on your historical lead time. On the other hand, storage limits are based on your IPI score. IPI score measures how efficiently and productively you manage your FBA inventory, which is already at Amazon. While restock limits apply to all sellers, sellers with consistently higher IPI scores receive higher limits. Therefore, we suggest you monitor your IPI score regularly. With this, we hope you have a better understanding of why we have these limits and how these are different. In the next section, we want to address some misconceptions about restock limits in particular. One of the common things we hear is that sellers think that limits will reduce if they remove inventory. This is a misconception. Restock limits are independent of your removals. In fact, removals is a good option to exercise to remove some of your slower moving items to immediately make room for fresh inventory. We've also heard seller feedback that limits do not take into account seasonal or new selection. For example, you see here feedback from a seller with a large selection of winter items and having a low limit during summer months. This may feel that we have only taken into account recent sales to calculate restock limits and not accounted for sales during sellers' peak selling periods. Let us help clarify. We look at various factors to generate your limits, including seasonal and peak selling periods for your products, forecasts for your ASINs, and the new selection you carry. Our forecasts are based on sophisticated machine learning models to predict your seasonal sales. We also look at previous year's sales volume to estimate your seasonal demand. Limits also take into account any new selection you carry and adjust appropriately. We also have the FBA new selection program, which offers incentives for launching new selection, such as free storage, removals, and discounts for new products added to FBA. 
So we encourage all of you to add new selection and take advantage of the FBA new selection program. Finally, another common misunderstanding is that restock limits are influenced only by your sales strengths. Mm -hmm. For example, here we see a feedback from a seller whose limits have reduced, although their sales have increased recently. We understand this can be confusing. The fact is, restock limits are influenced both by factors related to your business and the capacity we have available at a given point in time to receive your inventory. Consequently, depending on the available capacity in our network to receive your inventory, sellers may see lower limits even when sales performance is improving. We do not take decisions to reduce limits lightly and are continuously reviewing and increasing limits whenever feasible based on the capacity we have available. And we thank you for the patience during this uncertain time. In the previous section, we provided an overview of how capacity limits work and the key differences between restock and storage volume limits. In practice, we know that navigating through an environment with limits is challenging. Pavani and I connect with sellers every day. We hear your questions and concerns through account managers and contacts to selling partner support. We gather feedback directly from you when we're testing new features. And we read comments you make on seller forums and when you rate our tools on Seller Central. One common refrain we hear is, how can I grow my business on FBA as fast as I want when there are limits on how much inventory I can hold. In this section, we're gonna answer that question by walking through a step-by-step -step process you can apply to grow your business this peak season with limits. We call this the virtuous cycle of inventory management. Executed well, it can help you improve your IPI score, accelerate your sales, and improve your profitability. Best of all, all the tools you need to follow this process are right at your fingertips in Seller Central. The process starts by assessing the current state of your inventory performance. Once you know where your opportunities are, you can begin to shift the mix of your inventory to be more productive by reducing overstock inventory in order to make room within your limits to inbound new inventory by restocking productive inventory that delights customers, you can accelerate sales so your business grows along, so your limits grow along with your business. The benefits of efficient inventory management extend far beyond just managing within your limits. Efficient sellers have less working capital tied up in idle inventory, and they reduce FBA storage fees as a percentage of sales. So let's dive in. To access the tools we're gonna to discuss today, log into Seller Central and use the global drop-down menu to navigate to inventory, then inventory planning. The inventory performance dashboard shown here is your one-stop shop for assessing your inventory performance. Start by checking in on your inventory performance index or IPI score. IPI is a metric to gauge your inventory performance over time. As explained a moment ago, IPI measures how efficient and how productive you are in managing your FBA inventory. IPI is presented on a zero to 1000 scale where higher scores mean better performance and it's refreshed weekly, usually on a Monday. Numerous factors influence your IPI score. However, the most important ones are your actions. We surface your top influencing factors in four red, yellow, green bars in the center of the inventory performance dashboard. Excess inventory measures the proportion of your inventory units considered to be excess. And we'll share more detail on how we determine excess inventory in just a moment. Sell-through is the number of units shipped over the past 90 days divided by the average number of units on hand in our fulfillment centers during that time period. 
Stranded inventory indicates the proportion of your inventory that is not available for purchase due to a listing problem, which results in lost sales and unnecessary storage costs. Finally, in-stock rate measures how well you're keeping popular, replenishable products in stock to maximize your sales. The definition of each of these factors is shared on the IPI help page, which you can access by clicking on learn more at the top of the page. Your IPI score is a composite of your sustained inventory performance over time. It's designed to be relatively stable rather than responsive to just the most recent action taken. Influencing factors depict your recent inventory performance. So if your influencing factors are all trending green, keep up the good work. The blue box on the top right-hand side indicates the FBA storage fees paid as a percentage of FBA sales revenue. By carefully managing your influencing factors and IPI score, you may be able to reduce the amount you pay in storage fees, which drops straight to the bottom line of your FBA business. As we discussed earlier, maintaining an IPI score above the threshold means you will not be subject to FBA storage volume limits. Also, sellers with higher IPI scores tend to receive higher restock limits. For each of the influencing factors, we have supporting pages with ASIN level recommendations on how you can drive improvement. As you'll see, the next few slides will double click through those pages to show you how you can leverage them to drive the virtuous cycle of inventory management. Earlier this year, we launched the Manage Inventory Health page to better aid you in managing excess and aged inventory. This enhanced inventory planning experience gives you the increased decision-making metrics across sales, inventory, and fees. The most critical metrics are presented in near real time with more actionable recommendations in an intuitive interface, allowing you to identify overstocked inventory and improve your inventory performance more easily. We've also improved the filtering and sorting capabilities of the page to help you target inventory to action. You can now customize the tool to create views with the metrics that are most important to your business, including sell-through, storage volume, and non-productive inventory. Let me take you through three different approaches you can use to identify inventory that might be overstocked. First, you can sort your ASIN recommendations in the Manage Inventory Health page by the number of excess in units of inventory on hand. If you're above or near your limits, this should be your first order of business. Amazon defines excess inventory as inventory that will cost you more to hold and pay storage fees on rather than to um, create a sale, advertise, or liquidate. Amazon reviews the performance of each ASIN, and based on this assessment, the Manage Inventory Health tool indicates what action we believe is most likely to improve the ASIN's performance. For example, if traffic is low, we will recommend you advertise the ASIN. If conversion is low, we will recommend you mark down the ASIN. If it is a combination of low traffic and conversion, we'll recommend that you create an outlet deal for the ASIN. In the example on your screen, this seller holds 3,664 units of excess inventory in this particular ASIN, and the recommended action is to create an outlet deal. Second, the Manage Inventory Health page can also help you target aged inventory. When inventory exceeds 365 days in our fulfillment centers, you will start incurring long-term storage fees. By regularly reviewing the age of your inventory, you can take actions to sell through the inventory before it reaches 365 days. We have also launched new automated settings to help you manage aged inventory, avoid long-term storage fees, and address inventory 
that has not had a sale in six months. This can be especially helpful if you're starting out and need to spend your valuable time building your products and brands rather than managing inventory age. Or if you manage a large product portfolio and the age of inventory becomes too cumbersome to track at an, inventory, uh, at an individual ASIN level. At the upper right hand corner of the page, you'll notice a link for automated aging inventory removal. This takes you to the settings page that will allow you to configure automated returns, liquidations, or disposals of inventory aged over 365 days or without a sale in six months. Third, you can sort by days of supply on hand to identify ASINs where you hold more than 60 to 90 days of supply. Reviewing your restock limits, discussed next, can help you determine how aggressive you need to be. If you're above your limits, you may consider removing or liquidating inventory held above this level. Liquidations and removals are immediately removed from your inventory utilization, so they no longer count against your limits. On the other hand, creating a sale or outlet deal does not immediately reduce your utilization, as the inventory can take time to sell through. This might be a more advantageous strategy for addressing inventory with high days of supply if you are below your limits and have some wiggle room. You can now customize the Manage Inventory Health tool and create views with the metrics that are most important to your business. For example, if you care most about sell-through, storage volume, or non-productive inventory, you can add relevant metrics to your Manage Inventory Health default view and apply multi-filters to highlight the most relevant opportunities to take action. Sellers have taken note and are using the new Manage Inventory Health functionality to find opportunities to remove overstock. Restock Limit Monitor, uh, shown here, tells you your current maximum inventory level and utilization quantity. If utilization is below the maximum, you will see the number of additional units you're permitted to send listed as the maximum shipment quantity. Removing overstock is one effective strategy to create more room to inbound, but there are other things you can do as well. These include sending inventory that is expected to sell in the next one to two months, shipping in smaller quantities and replenishing more frequently, and deleting shipments that you do not intend to send. Each of these actions will help clear additional room to inbound. At this point, you may be wondering what to do with the units of available shipment quantity you have cleared within your restock limits. The restock inventory page is designed to help with recommendations of ASINs and quantities you should consider bringing in. Restock recommendations consider sales history and demand forecast. And you can also improve the accuracy of the recommendations by providing supply chain inputs specific to your business, such as lead time, how frequently you send inventory to Amazon, and case pack size. Click on Customize SKU Settings in the Action drop-down menu to customize the recommendations for your business. The Restock Recommendation Engine has been developed by our team of economists and data scientists over the course of several years and is similar to the technology used by Amazon Retail to determine the orders placed with vendors. I encourage you to give it a try and share your feedback with us by clicking on the Rate This Page link on the top of the Restock Inventory page. Your feedback has already helped us prioritize enhancements to the Restock page. For example, earlier this year, we updated the page so our recommendations now also consider your restock limits. If you're below your limits, this can help you prioritize fast selling products that need urgent restocking. If you're above your limits, the restock page will display the products where you have opportunity to reduce ex excess inventory or cancel open shipments. And 
you can take action directly from the restock page. The restock page is designed to guide your decisions on what, when, and how much inventory to ship in. And we are thrilled to hear from sellers that this tool is making it easier to manage business on FBA. Earlier, Pavani shared some of the important factors that influence your limits, including sales signals, shipment lead time, and Amazon's capacity to receive your products. In the chart on your screen, I've plotted restock limits against trailing 13-week customer orders for thousands of randomly sampled sellers. Amazon's capacity to receive your products does play a role in how limits are set. But nevertheless, you can see there's a strong positive relationship where sellers with higher customer orders tend to have higher restock limits. What does this mean for you? By following the first four steps of the virtuous cycle of inventory management, assess your inventory performance, remove overstock, manage room to inbound, and restock productive inventory, you have controlled what you can control to achieve the final step, accelerate sales, and allow your restock limits to grow along with your business.